Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another Jamesy Tech YouTube video. In this video, I'm going to go over how to land your first IT job. I'm going to go step by step into each step of the process in applying and getting your first IT job and what that may look like and how you should get started and some tips to help you get your first job. Just some quick background on myself. I'm currently an IT intern at a science company. I've been there for about a year. Um, I've had past experience being an intern for my high school. And, and these are some of the tips that I've learned while applying and getting and interviewing and all the all those sort of things. So this is kind of my advice coming from someone who pretty much had no experience starting out, but ended up getting my first position. So this is some of my advice that you may follow. Before we start off with the first step, I just want to say this is not a one size fit all situation. Everyone's situation is going to be different, whether you have no experience, some experience, a lot of experience. This could apply for some people, but not all these tips are going to apply to everybody. Um, if you guys want more advice, uh, comment down below. If you have a specific situation or question that you're uh, curious about and you have questions, go ahead and feel free to leave a comment. Um, I also have a diff Discord server with people who are trying to get into IT or people who are, are in IT. It's pretty much a Discord server for people to share their knowledge, things like that. So feel free to join. That is jamesy.live slash Discord or the link in the description. Feel free to join and let's get into it. First, we have evaluate. This is where you're going to be evaluating your current position, uh, maybe your past positions, uh, where you want to be and how you're going to get there. So pretty much I would start out by saying where you're at. So for example, if you don't have a job, like let's say you're in you're in college or in high school and you're looking for like an internship or a, for your first job or if you're out of college or you didn't go to college and you're working in a, a non-IT position start thinking about um, where you want to be and how you want to get there pretty much um, in some positions that would interest you so for example obviously the big uh, help desk role would be a good start for most people um, so kind of evaluate where you are. For example, if you work in an office and you had some sort of technical skills, but it's not directly like IT related, I would cater your resume to, to uh, pick out the technical parts of those jobs. So try to like uh, rebrand your old job titles into technical job titles, whether it's IT or not, kind of zone in on those technical things if you had any. Um, or any customer service ex experience because uh, customer service and uh, communication is very important when you're starting out. That's almost as if not more important than the technical aspects. So that's something that I would hone in on. For as you do that, you're going to see some of the skills that you have and some of the weaknesses that you have. So some of the skills that you have, that's something you could put on your resume as well if you already haven't done that. Um, as well as you should find out some of the, your weaknesses in the IT field. So for example, look at some of the job postings and see what they're looking for. Some of those things you may already have some knowledge in, for example, like Microsoft 365, like office products, pretty much a lot of jobs, uh, office jobs will have some experience with that. So that could be a skill that you have on your resume, but some weaknesses you might have, that might be something you want to keep in your head so that when you're trying to get a job in the future, or you're trying to learn new skills. Those are some of the things that you might want to focus on first. So the next category, we already touched, touched up a little bit on this, but we're going to get into the skills that you should have or try to have to get into the IT field. Um, this is kind of mixed in with the evaluation. Right after you do this, you might think of some of the skills you have. Obviously, if you have some skills listed on your resume or uh, keep that in mind, at least. Um, if you're lacking in certain categories, make sure that you learn. YouTube's a great resource. Google's a great resource. Um, there's a lot of courses like Udemy has certain courses on uh, basic IT stuff. Um, I'm sure there's other websites that have courses, but YouTube is a good start because it's all free. Um, you don't want to spend too much money training just to get a job. Um, you can spend some money if it's on like certifications. Um, if you're someone who isn't in college and you don't have any certifications, that's probably where I would start certifications. Um, if you're not in college, you didn't get a degree or you're in a completely different field, getting a couple tech certifications would definitely be something you should look for because when you apply for these jobs, you definitely want to have some things that will stand out compared to the other people who are going to be applying certifications is one of those things. Obviously a lot of people have certifications, but if you're someone who doesn't compared to someone who does, that would help you stand out a little bit more. Other than certifications, though, try to do projects. Um, and also, you have a lot of courses you could follow, boot camps, academies, uh, courses. So you can list like some of the Udemy courses you've taken or any boot camps you've been through. Um, I know boot camps are like very practically uh, driven, so you'll do a lot of hands-on stuff. But boot camps, I believe, are usually a lot more expensive uh, than like online courses. Um, you could also do competitions. For example, if you're trying to get into like security, you could do CTFs, capture the flag events. Um, and also do home labs to uh, do projects yourself just to build up your resume and also along with that, build up your skills as well. 
along with that make sure you back up your skill with passion um obviously doing labs at home shows that you have at least some sort of drive to get into what you're doing so try to show passion in what you're doing especially when you're going into interview and making your resume things like that definitely show that you have passion and you want to learn more than you already have and how you've learned skills and how you're going to apply them after you learn them so next we got the resume and cover letter yes cover letter you should have a cover le cover letter in my opinion at least from ever since i've started using a cover letter i've been getting a lot more replies and uh, offers and interviews so that is something i would definitely do more uh, i'll touch up on how to make one or at least how i made mine um and yeah so obviously look at some examples of, of some people who are in tech some people on linkedin will post their resume or have their resume on there for example i do um if you go to my link tree in the description you can click on my resume and you'll be able to see what it looks like if you want to copy mine or go off of mine feel free um so pretty much make sure um you have a linkedin account as well a lot of uh recruiters will reach out to you on linkedin i've had a good amount of recruiters reach out to me on linkedin for like job posts or job postings and then that's how you can get to like the first interview usually um they'll like set up a phone call and then things go on from there um, some things you want to include on your resume is experience, education, certs, coursework, if applicable, projects, um, a summary about yourself, maybe it depends on uh, how big your resume is. Usually you want to keep it at one page. A lot of people struggle with that and keep it at one page when you're first starting out because um, if you have two pages of like sort of irrelevant information or redundant information, that could be a big turnoff or if, if it's not formatted well or if you just have a big block of text for all your descriptions, don't do that. Do small, uh, small one sentence bullet points. Definitely, definitely do that. If you guys want me to look at your resumes, join my discord, send it to me and I can help you out. Uh, for example, my resume, it goes my name and my info. And then under that is my summary, um, a little bit about me and then uh, the experience, my experience, education, my certifications and my awards. So it's a pretty uh, basic resume. I don't have my skills on there because I probably would go over that one page. Um, I definitely don't like to put skills on there as much, but that's just for me personally, it's going to be a lot different, especially if you don't have any experience IT and IT experience, definitely want to put skills on your resume, things like that. Now let's get to the cover letter of things. A cover letter is a few small paragraphs, one page long. Um, you will have your name at the top, your phone number, usually in your email, and then you'll have like a nice little regard saying, dear hiring manager, things like that. Um, give a nice opening, expressing your interest in the job and make sure you get the job title right and the company right. Um, make sure you change it for each company. Um, you can like leave like a, like, a, like a bracket saying company and then position. So saying I'm excited to apply for X company for Y position, things like that. Um, and also you can cater different cover letters to different uh, like jobs. Like for example, if you're doing networking compared to IT help desk, there might be a little difference in how you're going to word um, some of your skills and things like that in your cover letter. Um, then the second paragraph goes more into depth about uh, your projects and work experience. If you have any, um, if you don't have any work experience, you can go into the projects. So I'm going to go over how I wrote my cover letter. I'm not going to go word for word, but I'll show you each pair or tell you how each paragraph goes. So I address the hiring manager saying, expressing my interest. Um, in your opening paragraph, uh, I talk about like how I'm going to improve the IT workflow and organization by using these skills, X, Y, and Z. And then I go about a brief summary about my experience, projects, and certifications, just a little open paragraph, because let's say they don't read the whole thing. Well, they'll probably, I hope they would if they were to move you forward, but if they're reading the first paragraph, that's kind of like your hook to make them read more pretty much basic English class stuff. Um, my second paragraph goes more into depth about my projects, work experience. So it goes into more depth after the initial starting paragraph. Um, talk if you, if it's someone who has no experience, talk about your home lab, personal projects, or like, let's say you're doing try hack me, um, where you're learning like networking and stuff and you're doing physical hands-on learning, or if you're doing packet tracer, that could be examples of projects that you've done. Um, if you're talking about a position that you've been in, talk about figures, um, companies like figures, for example. Um, I decrease tickets by 50% by automating this process, things like that. Companies love to hear figures um, to back up what you're actually, um, what you actually did, things like that. Even if it's projects, you could talk about the figures and how it would affect an organization. Third paragraph goes about my college courses. Um, it's a good place for you to talk about any coursework or courses that you've um, done or certifications also. So if you've done Udemy courses or like a Google certification course, you can list that in there, what you've learned and how you're going to apply that. Always don't just say, um, I've learned this, this, and this. 
say kind of express uh how you're going to use those skills in the real world don't just say oh i learned how to do this and this and this you should definitely tell them how you're going to apply it in their position that they want to hire someone who's going to use those skills in the position so definitely um make sure you do that my fourth paragraph talks about my awards uh, that's an optional paragraph and then closing paragraphs like two sentences long if not like a sentence uh, restating your interest um and you're excited to hear back from the hiring manager leave a nice regard um and yeah that's pretty much a cover letter now let's get into the resume now the next core category we have is apply one thing that i hear a lot from people especially when they're com when they come to me saying they can't find a job there's only been a couple people i've really experienced this with if not like yeah about two people that i can think of is i ask how many jobs you've applied for sometimes they'll say oh like five or six and they don't hear back i'm like you gotta make you gotta apply full time. That has to be your full time job until you land your job. Um, you can't just apply to five or six jobs and expect to hear back from two or three of them. That's a really big turnover for people responding. Unless you have a really good resume, that's very possible, very very possible. But um, if you're starting out, likely you're gonna get a lot of uh, "we're not moving forward with you" things like that, or no response at all. Apply to hundreds and hundreds of jobs. Like I literally mean hundreds and hundreds of jobs. Because one, that'll just by simple math, that'll increase your chances of landing a job. It also gives you more exposure. It does take time, yes, and it might be mundane. But if you want to land a job in IT, you have to apply more than other people who are going to try to get those entry level jobs. So definitely apply to hundreds of jobs until you hear back. Now, if you don't hear back after a while, it could be your resume that is, um, I guess, sort of making companies not want to interview you. That could be a reason why you don't move forward um, if you're stuck in the apply zone and you don't move to like the phone interview things like that it's probably your resume or your cover letter go back and reevaluate those things if that's the case another thing is don't limit yourself to linkedin that's how people only apply to five or six jobs use other platforms indeed monster there's a bunch of other platforms you can apply to jobs on um, and if you yeah and once again if you hear nothing back it's probably your resume or cover letter and you probably want to reevaluate evaluate it and take out redundant redundant information or irrelevant information now, after this you get to the interview if you move forward hopefully out of those hundreds of companies you move forward on at least one of them but like i said if you don't it's definitely your resume or cover letter or you're wording things incorrectly or formatting them incorrectly um, so for interviews communication skills are more important than your uh, techiness and your technical skills in my opinion yes they'll want some experience or like some knowledge but a lot of times they're going to teach you how to do things for their company because companies are all different around the place. So communication is way better, especially like the phone interview with the recruiter. They're not technical people. Usually they're the like not the hiring manager, but the HR person who's going to forward it to um, your future boss. So pretty much the first phone interview, if you're talking to a recruiter, you're going to you definitely want to talk about um, your more of your communication skills, some of your tech skills, because they are going to forward it to um for your second interview if they want to do a second interview if you don't move forward past the first interview it probably means somewhere in there you either didn't say enough like talk about your skills enough or um they didn't like how you communicated or your personality things like that so if you're getting past the apply section and you're not getting past the interview it's not your resume it's probably your interviewing skills talk to yourself in a mirror, do mock interviews, look at uh, common interview questions, and also do research on the company you're interviewing for. You don't want to you know, interview for a company you have no idea what they do or what their objectives are and some of their workers. One thing that I personally do is I add all the people who are interviewing me on LinkedIn, maybe not the first phone interview, but when I move forward to the second interview and you're talking to the actual technical people, I go on LinkedIn and add them. Usually they'll let you know who's going to be interviewing you. I look them up, see what they do, see how long they've been there. So at least when I come in, I at least have some understanding of how long they've been there, some of their skills and what they may be looking for, especially if they have their job description um, in their LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, after the second interview, there might be a third one, depending on the company. Some people might not. Um, the internship I have now is only two interviews, the phone interview, then the second interview. But third interview usually will be uh, like, second interview might be with like the manager and one other person the third interview probably would be with the whole team and then that's more of like getting to know you and seeing if you're going to fit with the team 
Uh, but communication skills are the most important part of the interview process, in my opinion. And then after that process, you'll get offered. You can negotiate, things like that. But if you're landing your first job, definitely be careful on how you negotiate. Um, yeah. So in conclusion, getting an IT job isn't easy because the job market right now is kind of crazy. People are having trouble finding their entry level jobs. But if you persist and try and try and try and don't give up, you will succeed. I believe in you. You guys are awesome. You will land an IT position if you believe in yourself. You can't apply for jobs going for the interview and no, you don't believe in yourself. That's not going to do you well. Make sure to believe in yourself when you actually go in for the interview so you can actually express your skills and do well. So yeah, this is Jamesy Tech. This is uh, how to get your first IT job. Join my Discord down below if you have any questions or if you just want to join our IT community. I'm trying to build it up. We have about uh, 70 members right now, so we're trying to get it to 100. Um, I post on there all the time and talk to, uh, talk to everybody. So yeah, this is Jamesy Tech. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.